Pokemon fans the world over, welcome back to the Pokemon trading card game Bremen Regional Championships. I'm Nicholas Pierce, I'm here with Lydia Homback. We have for you the finals of the Bremen Regional Championships. So be prepared for a great battle. We have Mark Lutz, who we just see, saw on stream, versus Todd Radcliffe. Yeah, two, two of... The, I mean, if you think of like, yeah. you know, well-known European players, these two guys have got to be at, at somewhere exactly. in the conversation. Yeah. Like, definitely. Like, this is, um, you know, sometimes we do see some of the newer players like, making a really good show for themselves. But, you know, this time, no, two extremely well-established names are going to go head-to-head -head in what will hopefully be a really incredible match. I'm excited. Yeah, are I you am, excited? Of course I am excited. And you better be excited too, because we're going to flip over to the match right now. And these guys are just sort of setting up. And so. um, looks like Mark has already managed to find himself a basic, but... Uh, Philip, not so much. Oh, oh. that's... <laughs> oh, um... Philip, not so much. Whoops. Update. There. This is Tord, not Philip. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, although, I mean, if Philip wasn't the finals, you know, it also wouldn't be surprising, to be fair. Yeah, but, that's true. But some... Can we just take a second to talk about Tord? Like, is he just taking all of, like, the Pokemon prizes? Like, this guy cannot stop making finals at events. Like... That's true. It's just it's so crazy how good this guy is. Yeah, he he's incredibly strong at the moment. Seems like he has to he has found like exactly the deck he he wants to play. He's extremely good playing Drempa Garbodor. Yeah, definitely. All right, so both of these players are set up now. We are going to give the judge the thumbs up so we can all get started at the same time. Everyone, three, two, one, start the timer. Let's both players like, shake their hands and right at the start, so we have an Espiony X against a Trubbish. And Mark will be going first. So, what does he have? He has a rainbow energy, which he almost debates attaching now. Is is the rest of his hand on work? Well, no, he has an N, oh. so... For a second I thought there was, was going to be like one of those games, but... He's actually thinking pretty hard about this. Oh, he's got Sycamore too. Yeah, I think... Yeah, yeah, he's playing the N. Yeah. I think the reason why he was a little bit reluctant about the N is because if he plays his N and sees nothing, it is not unreasonable for Tor to get a uh, first turn knockout on this uh, Trubbish. I think all you need is, uh, actually no, he wouldn't be able to, he has no energy acceleration, come to think of it, so he's actually fine, but um, it, it, potential danger zone, essentially. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, oh actually, really, this is the, not top four, this is the final, oh, we just realised. of realize. course, this is the final. Yeah, we need to get that changed quickly. And so, what? let's see, what does um, Mark get off of this end right now? Oh, he's got the Coco promo, that's, it's something. But he did not get a win pod, so he's just forced to pass. That's a bit of an unfortunate start for Mark. Not how you want to start off the finals of a regional championships. Definitely not. Actually, you you always want to start with a Bridget in your off, on your first turn, but Mark wasn't able to find one. He had to use an N. Yeah, no uh, Lele, no Ultra Ball, no opening the Bridget. Whereas Tord on the other hand has Lele straight away. So I'm assuming if it's there available, he's going to be going for this Bridget now. Of course, but still, Tord hasn't got the perfect start you don't really want to start with your sp on the x actually well in this matchup you you might use it or you you want to use it but not that early in the game no definitely not um in any case uh right now he's looking again as always you know playing it playing it smart looking for his deck seeing what's available to him he, he would you see oh he's gonna eye up he's eyeing up the eevee there now this Ooh. isn't the card he uses in every matchup because the espion isn't always useful to him but uh i think i vaguely recall him mentioning that uh glitterpod was one of the matchups where he sometimes does feel like using the eevee although wait no that would make no sense because the you retreat all the time and you ace roll all the time so no actually completely ignore what i said completely <laughs> it actually makes no sense um he's going for a bridget though um pretty classic he, oh, he's going for the is. Eevee. Okay, but you know what it is? I think it, instead of it for Psybeam or whatever, he's actually using it for Psychic and Divide. I think yeah. because, of course, this is an evolution deck, this is one of those decks where you can go for the more like, spread damage and evolve strategy. This is uh, something that Tor really likes to use. He's talked about it before. He's even started with the Espioni X already, although you don't really want to do that because you normally want to use that later. But it means he has access to it at a later point. And it's something that Mark needs to think about as this match progresses. Yeah, and it's not too bad he started with the Espeon. Even if it gets KO'd, Tord has ways to get it back into the game. Yeah, he does. It, it, it is a, the other thing I guess that's a bit of a shame is that uh, it kind of uh, gets KO'd easily by a uh, trash lunch because it is weak to Psychic. That's, oh, yeah. that's the only unfortunate part. But other than that, Tord is off to a really great start here. As you can see, he's got the Bridget down uh, for the Dramper, the Trubbish, and the Eevee. He's even got the Psychic Genji in hand, ready to attach to the Eevee to use the Energy Evolution ability to evolve into the Espeon GX as well. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to do. Um, it's it's a good way to to evolve your Pokemon very fast. Um, 
We also saw the EV play today in uh, some guardable variants, but yeah, yeah. for the Sylveon instead of the because of the magical exactly. ribbon ability, that and that EV really just one of the best EVs we've had in a long time. It's just very very strong. Um, I agree. So, ultra ball now from Mark. He's good scouting. It looks to be some kind of support. So I can't see what it is, but also a Garbodor, and he's gonna go for the Lele for the Bridget. So Finally. there we go. Yeah, one turn too late, but getting it on turn two isn't the end of the world. This uh, is if when you miss it like for three or four turns in a row where it starts to become more of a problem. But this is this is manageable. This is definitely manageable. Definitely looks like he's going to for three Whimsicott, which is understandable. This is well all he wants to go for. Uh, yeah. It, Whimsicott is oh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> like um, Whimsicott is that fluffy Pokemon from Generation oh, yeah, Five. Yeah, true, yeah. true. true. A Wimpod. Wimpod. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, uh, I just had this really funny image of like Mark playing Whimsicott now. <laughs> His hair looks like a Whimsicott actually. It's all, it's all like, it's all like <laughs> it doesn't though. It looks, it looks like a fluffy and stuff. <laughs> oh, we should tell him later. <laughs> If he wins, we can tell him in person right now. Um, well, <laughs> after this match is over. But so, anyway, back to the game. So, yeah, Mark, off to a much better start. He's able to get the Bridget. He's got three wind wind pods out, so he can now, you know, start evolving into Glissopods, attaching his energies, getting these chains of uh, first impressions going, and really start to go into the main strategy of his deck. Meanwhile, back on Tord's side, instead we see just a Professor Sycamore from, from a uh, Lele specifically. So towards the shuffling his deck, um, maybe he's going to play a few more cards before he is playing out the second one he's just searched for. No. no. Just, uh, Todd, wow. Todd always does this. Whenever he just got like a big mount, he just sort of like, that's all flop on the table. It's like, look at that. That's he what it was. Basically just throws it away. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I banish me to the discard pile. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... But mm, actually, that was not a. Oh no, that, that was Mark's disco pile. I was going to say not a great draw from Tord, actually. But looking at his hand proper, which we can't even see right now, um, he just he just wants to find energy at this point. He's got all his Pokemon yeah. out. He's even got another Garbodor. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, I say another Garbodor. I mean, he has a Garbodor. I think he he's considering. Yeah, he's placing putting down a Rainbow Energy to a Drumper. Mm hmm. And I think now what he wants to do probably is, yeah, as you say, he has a float stone. He will attach that. He probably retreat into the Dramper and Not oh, into the Espion. Interesting. So actually, he's just going, going to go for the Psy Beam. Yeah, Not... Travis is weak to Psychic. Psychic. It is, but sadly, it has 70 yeah. HP. So it will, the Psy Beam will be 10 short of the knockout, but it does force Mark to have the evolution in order to cure, the, cure it or a field blow up to the float stone. And yeah. uh, I think that's why I told Ren for it. Normally, you probably wouldn't bother, but the fact that, yeah, the. the um, the choice band is there already means that uh, Mark is actually just stuck entirely. Wow. Mm. No energy, no draw support. Only, Only two Glissopods. Yeah. yeah. Which is still fine, to be fair. You know, it, it's it's something. But uh, yeah, Disruption is now going to go down. Um, two items now for in a Discord power for Mark. Uh, and now he promotes the Tapu Koko promo, obviously, because he wants to make sure that he can retreat to get the extra damage first impression and follows that up by benching another Trubbish and playing it in. So he finally must have found a, a supporter card that he's now happy to play. Yeah. Um, so really, all he wants off this end is an energy. He just wants to, you know, get his attack in, you know, start doing first impressions. Really put some pressure on Tord to really mount a response back. Ideally, Mark would like to see a grass energy, which he yeah. does do. If you saw a rainbow energy, that could have been a bit of a problem because then Tord can retreat into the jumper and Mike just has the rainbow right off. But he does see the basic grass. That is definitely. A really ideal uh, thing for him. There's another heavy ball. Um, maybe going for the third Glissopod. Yeah, it will be either the third Glissopod or, or he a might. Garbador. Yeah, and he, that's what he decides to do. He wants to get the Garbodor ready for next turn just to stop the up toward maybe from being able to use uh, Garbatoxin in the late game to bail, bail out of an end. Um, but he won't be able to evolve it straight away because, of course, the Trubbish was benched before he played that end. Um, and that is now three items in Mark's yeah. discard pile as well. It's it's pretty nice that they uh, sort them in a different pile. Yeah, just make it really obvious. Yeah. Um, right now, Mark is debating whether to attach his float stone. He does indeed attach it to the glissopod that's about to attack. Brings it to the active first impression of 120 back to Tord. So, Tord still has some time for his setup. Mark isn't really well. He's he is in a good position, but not well. He has just started attacking. Um, Tord was already able to put on some early game pressure, 
Not as much as he could have done with Drapo Garbodor, but still not too bad. No, indeed, not too, still not too bad at all. And uh, after that, yeah, like we like we sort of predicted, I guess, uh, he will go for the retreat, but actually he will be able to do the Berserk for, not going to oh, be yeah. 180, but it will be 150, because uh, it is, of course, um, the Espeon is damaged from the attack, so uh, that Berserk's uh, extra damage effect will trigger. So this is where Mark needs to start finding and chaining his Acer Rollers, basically. Like, Ace of is how these win this matchup. Like, Mark was, uh, I was talking with Mark uh, earlier, and we even said it, in, I think a little bit in the interview, the way this deck wins, essentially, if you can't one-shot the Glissopod, yeah. the Glissopod wins, because you just Ace Rail every time, you just switch between the stuff, and your opponent can just never take prizes meaningfully. But as Mark also told us, the match, he believes that the matchup is pretty close, and you, you really need the cards and, uh, at the point, uh, or on point, so... Yeah. There's a float stone uh, as well going, uh, guarding off the Espeon because oh, because it's going to sick him more anyway, so may as well. Uh, sadly, no Israel of Mark is a bit, a bit of a sad development because uh, that means that that Galissapod, he's he's going to have to like retreat it now instead, basically, and attack with something else. But I don't think he, I, I don't think he drew another colored energy. I think he only drew a double colorless. Yep. So. Good. You're correct. So that's going to go on the tap with Lily, and I imagine yeah, he's going to retreat into that and just uh, energy drive for a hundred. That's not really what you want to do now, but I I guess it's okay. It, it's okay as long as Tord doesn't see a choice band. If see, Tord sees a choice band, then he can do Berserk for 180 and knock out the Lele in one hit, which that, at that point would definitely not be ideal. It's not so unlucky that Tord sees a choice band now, so... Yeah. I mean, it's definitely doable. We know, you know Tord likes to... You know, he, he, he this list is almost an anomaly, because normally he just plays very consistent yeah. for everything. He's actually... For once, actually, taking in a couple of things like this 1-1 one, one, uh, SP online. But, yeah, I think he still plays at least three, if not more than likely four choice band. In fact, no, he mentioned he plays eight tools, so yeah. He yeah. still plays four choice band, so chances are he can see one here and uh, take a big knockout on his Lele, which would be really great for him. But he doesn't seem to have it yet. But he hasn't played his support card yet. No. Looks like that's a <laughs> rainbow energy now going onto that Espeon, so that might be able to, you know... Maybe do a Cyber later on, or maybe he might be just preparing it for a Psychic later on. Maybe he feels like oh, that, that could be. either that or he hasn't used a big wheel yet, so actually Divide is no. still an option for him. But, ooh, Tord actually just going for the Righteous Edge, discarding the double colorless energy. Looks like Mark didn't see that coming. Perhaps not, no. But he has an Ace of Roller. He can actually, oh, oh, that's so cool. So you can, yeah, pick up the Galissapod, uh, attach a, a grass like that, and I'm assuming he has a float zone in his hand. Maybe not. He has another wind pod. Yep, he yep. does. So he can now, now he can heal the other Glissopod. Float zone on the Lele, retreat to the this fresh Glissopod and do first impression to take the knockout on the Dramper. Wow, really that's good. huge. Yeah, great, great turn for Mark there. Absolutely the big tempo swing that he needed to just put himself right back into this game. And now Tord is just forced to send up this damaged Espeon GX and that cannot be good news. Not at all. Towards the only attacker now is Espeon GX, and uh, well, it's almost KO'd. He has, he has a Garbodor on his bench, but the damage output of Garbodor's Treasure Lens is not enough yet. But that's why he's setting up a Dramper now. Yeah, and uh, again, the really cool thing that uh, uh, Mark has been able to do is uh, just the fact that he's been able to attack with the Grass energy means that yeah. Righteous Edge doesn't really affect the Glissapod the same way it does other stuff. And, oh, Mark has another basic grass and the Float Stone completely undoing the side Beam. Going to be able to bring up the other Glissapod into the active and first impression again for another knockout and another two prizes. Wow. No, Mark is just not missing a single beat here. Every single time he has the answer to anything, any threat that Tor poses. And this is really showing the power of the Glissapod Garbador deck when it's at its best. That's so true. Mark is on fire. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Although, if he was on fire, that might be bad, you know, the Glissapod's a weak to fire, Aww. so... <laughs> in fact, actually, I say it's the strength of Glissapod Garbodor, it's not even that, it's just the strength of Glissapod as a card, because the Garbodor hasn't even done anything, that Trubbish has just been sitting there doing nothing. It's just threatening a little bit. Yeah. Just, uh, just staring at Tord and telling him, hey, don't play too many item cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, you know. Or, or do, you know, if you want to, that's cool too. <laughs> you do lots of damage, but... Uh... <laughs> Throw it all away. Yeah. Huh. So now Todd brings up the Espeon EX again, and uh, that hand looks pretty bad, Lydia. Um, really? Yeah. He's got at least he's got a float stone. At least, but does he actually just not have a draw supporter? I think he has no energy as well. That's 
that's just really bad. There's, there's no other way to describe <laughs> that. There's just uh, there another trubbish and another floatstone down. Oh, he's oh. in. He's hiding it from us. So I guess he was either he just drew that now, or he was saving it for when Mark took a deck two prizes to make sure that Mark would enter low lumber. But I think the problem that Mark has, or sorry, the problem that Todd has, is sure he's ending Mark to only two cards in hand, but. Mark has the attackers ready. You can just keep retreating between these Galissapods, keep doing first impressions and just really ruin towards day. Yeah, it's, it's one of these situations where one of the players has basically all he needs on the field. Yeah. What, the only card that Mark really needs to draw are Acer Rollers, but well, he's he only needs to take two prizes, so it's not too bad if he if he loses one of his Galissapods. No. He could even, although it's unlikely to, to draw it, he also just, assuming that Tord leaves his Espion active, which granted he won't, so... Um, well, actually, either way, um, Tord is not in a good good state, because either he leaves the Espion EX active, or, and, or puts up another EX or GX, yeah. and then just gets, uh, then leaves himself open to more first impressions, or even potentially game, if Mark can find Field Blower DC Choice Band. Or he brings up the... the um, Trash Lash Garbador? That's a Field Blower. Yeah, there's a Field Blower, but he's not opting to discard his own one. So it looks like he's yeah, just going for the first impression. Uh, what does Tord draw? It is a Psychic Energy. Tord now needs a Field Blower. Uh, oh. Tord now needs some, some kind of switching card, either a Guzmar or a um, Floatstone. Yeah. We seem to have an intruder in the commentary area, a certain uh, Jesper Eriksson who was uh, going to be, who you guys tried to, has to be banned earlier. <laughs> Do you have anything to say for yourself, Jesper? I'm terrible at this game. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, I, well, you know, at least he's honest. <laughs> um, it was a bit away from that brief distraction. Back to the game, looks like, yeah, Tord is just not in a good position at all. Taking that 120 from the first impression, he's like we said, he's got the psychic energy. He needs to retreat this Espion. If he doesn't, he loses the game. So he must have a floatstone in hand because otherwise he wouldn't attach that psychic to the bench. Unless he has a Guzma, that's I guess another option. Oh yeah, oh, he has the Guzma. So there it is. Guzma gonna bring up. I guess the Wimpod is the only really viable target. I, th I think Wimpod is the only viable side. Oh, or, or Trubbish. I guess Trubbish. Trubbish has a lot of retreat costs compared to its size. I mean, it's a yeah. small trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's got a retreat cost of two. Oh, he's actually just knocking it out. So now Mark is thinking, can I just take the win here? What does he draw? No matter what he does, he has a knockout on the on the trash and lunch. That's pretty good. He can just you know retreat into the other Galissapod and just do first impression of one twenty. Yep. That pretty much takes out most of the threats that Tord can, or the the, uh, the biggest or only threat that Tord can pose to him right now, because that Drampa isn't going to be knocking out these Galissapods anytime soon. Yeah, he's he's going to. It, go wait, for did he? Oh no, Mark! Oh no, he didn't retreat. Oh, Mark, what are you doing? Oh, that, ladies and gentlemen. We are still discussing. Is it because he didn't announce it, I guess? <sighs> that, ladies and gentlemen, is a Nikki No-No. Uh, and oh. I guess. He forgot to retreat. Yeah. Well, he didn't announce a retreat. Yeah. I mean... Oh. I mean, there's just not many items in Mark's discard pile, so I think it's still not the end of the world for him. Uh, I don't think he, I don't think he loses the game because of that, but that's got to be frustrating. <laughs> there's no, oh, no, look no, at his face. Yeah, I think he's just, if anything, I think he's just annoyed with himself. If you know what I mean, because yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he definitely is. But still, Mark still is in a good position. Yeah, it's it's a misplay or yeah, it's it's a misplay. It's it's a Nicky no no. That's what it is. <laughs> um, uh, Tord go using the Ultra Ball to grab himself the Garbador, uh, the Trash Lunch one, and just going to play a Sycamore after that. So yeah, so he has got something now. Um, yeah, Mark still doesn't need too much to win. He only he only has two more prizes to take. So uh, and this Garbador, Garbador will not be KOing the Galissapod right now because there's not enough items in Mark's discard pile. Mark's barely played any items at all. Um, yeah, Mark played very conservative. But yeah, you managed to just you know see everything off of the supporters and the Bridget, so like the Bridgets yeah. and seeing playing the ends to get the 
his other evolutions out. Um, now, I wonder what you do if you're taught here. I mean, you can just trash launch again. Um, I think Todd already planned with the Garbodor going down. <laughs> yeah. So now he kind of needs to rethink. Yeah, in a weird way, could this end up actually working out in Mark's favor? Because he does he's doing 30, but now sort of, you know, maybe if Todd planned to attack with something else, planned for the, uh, for the Garbodor to be knocked out. Maybe this actually could help Mark in a weird roundabout way. I mean, it's unlikely. It depends on what he draws, really. Does he have the win? Oh, yeah, it's a roller. Oh. So it didn't even matter. Okay, I okay, it matters a little bit, but uh, yeah, no. Um, Mark avoiding punishment minorly from the misplay, at least. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and then the other wind pod goes down. Uh, the grass gets put onto the bench glitz pod with the choice band, and now Mark can do first impression for 120, and it will be the Finally. knockout. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Mark. Yeah, but he won't be doing that again anytime soon, I can tell you that much. <laughs> um, and yeah, Mark taking the knockout first impression, attaching all the items in his hand because he's probably expecting to get end again. Um, and then uh, Tord now... Oh, actually, this is the one way it does make a big difference. Um, Tord is now able to actually power up the Dramper and yeah. uh, and hit something. That That's how that's how it changes stuff, basically. So now he's able to Guzmo out the uh, Galissapod as well. And because it already had 30 damage on it from the Poe Town, that's actually with the Berserk um, being triggered, it's actually a knockout that's pretty big. So Tord's finally uh, able to, to draw some more prizes. Tord's down to two prizes, Mark only has one prize card left. Yes. And there's the damaged as a Peon EX on the bench, so if Mark is able to find a Guzma, that's game for him. It is. And even if, even if he doesn't find it this turn, he should still be able to find it next turn, potentially. He's, uh, Tord does... Wait, does Tord have two? Oh no, Tord only has two prizes left. Yeah. There's an Acerola. Oh, picking up the Lele, okay. Yeah, he, he tries to play it safe. Yeah. Maybe he's picking it, putting, putting it down again. For, for, oh no, there's a Garbo. Yeah. Is Garbo Toxin act, uh, activated? Yes, there's a choice band yeah. on it. Um, but this is uh, this is still fine. Um, is this a Garbo Toxin Garbo Door? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. Um, if Mark has a Fuel Blur next turn, he can just Lele lay, lay and get the last support he needs for the game, obviously. If he gets. Um, if Tord keeps this uh, Dramper active, he can just uh, retreat. It's, he can, no, he still doesn't actually he needs grass energy and a um, and, and another Galissapod. And yeah, obviously Tord's not going to leave this Dramper active, he can avoid it. He's going to retreat into the Lele. Yeah. And um, now he's going to be able to do energy drive, but only for 60, mind. Oh, sorry, 90. There is a choice man on the Lele. Um, could Tord be about to pull this back well it seems pretty unlikely but well basically he he got an well half an extra turn i do not want to say an extra turn yeah because mark had the s roller yeah. but he had one more turn to to bring energies into game yeah. did um, wait did mark draw a card for his turn i don't know yeah no no i don't think he did I think he did. I, I oh, think yeah, at least more. he would have noticed. Oh, what's... <sighs> Still not looking too happy with what he's got. No. Tord can now win the game off of a um, DC uh, with the choice band. Looks like Mark's going to bring up the Tapu Coco. And he's going to pass. Does Tord have wow. the game? He does! Wow! Incredible! Tord completely turned this game around. Who would have thought of that? That is crazy. I'm Aww. wondering, yeah, because although it, may, it only seems small, that one extra bit of a turn that Tord had meant he could attach an extra energy, yeah. and that was actually made all the difference. That made all the difference because Tord was then able to attack with Drunkard. Yeah, I think that's the first time I've ever seen Mark make a big mix misplay of that as well. Like he, you know, he's always so on point with everything, but uh, that time I guess it just the pressure just got to him. Well, actually, I saw him do a misplay. Um, he played in. A final of a regional championships in Germany in um, Dortmund, I guess. Yeah. And um, this was a time where he, yeah, he played um, Virus and Genesect, and he uh, his G booster was in the discard pile, and he played um, this 
plasma support your trainer card that lets you put a plasma tr um, trainer back into your hand and he somehow choose not to take G booster but something else yeah. for some reason and that's why he lost and he was so salty that he threw his deck through the entire hall and um, yeah. Yeah, well, let's say like looking in the chat, a lot of you guys are not happy about uh, this um, this thing about Mark not retreating. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's one of these things that obviously, you know, Mark Mark owned up to his own misplay. Essentially, he could have yeah. like really argued about it, but in the end, he just sort of gave up and really acknowledged that you know he just didn't do it. Essentially, like if he if he if he owns if he owns up to it, oh no and he's still doing it like that <laughs> also guys saying hi hi to Jesper. <laughs> Tor needs another bathroom break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also I don't know if Tor specifically sort of said, oh no, you can't do it, or whether like the judge said, or how exactly we can't actually hear the players at all, yeah. so we don't know exactly how how it happened, but um, yeah, that's. Um, I mean, if you if you're doing things by the book, that is how it works out. That is the thing. But um, it guess depends on which way you uh, prefer to, you know, approach things. Like some people would let you set that back, some people wouldn't, and yeah. that's, you know, you, you really can't you can't be annoyed one way or the other because like that's the way the game works. You know, either your opponent can like say okay or not. But enough about that anyway. Let's uh, carry on. Let's focus on the current game. So it looks like um, Mark started already. Of course, he he decided to go first. He has a whim card in the active position with a basic energy attached to it and a choice band, and um, and he, he passes. He, he oh no! Wait, hold on. Does oh no? I don't think his horde can't win. The whim card has seventy HP, so yeah. I don't think he can. Yeah, he can't win straight away. But uh, still, if Mark isn't able to find himself another basic Pokemon next round. That he will loses. Be game. <laughs> it, will, it definitely will be a game. Uh, so Tor's going to play the Ultra Ball. Gonna score. It's weird because I thought I saw an Ultra Ball in Mark's hand, but he just didn't play it. Well, I. There's no reason not to play it. He could play it for Lele and Bridget, and he'd be fine. No, so. no, we know he's Sycamore. That's the thing. He played a Sycamore, but then he drew into an Ultra Ball to Sycamore and just hasn't didn't play it. <laughs> <laughs> well, is he saying he wished he attached a rainbow to end the game yeah. sooner or something? I, I don't really know. <laughs> it seems like the sort of thing Mark would say, to be honest. Just <laughs> probably like that annoyed at himself about the misplay. Annoyed with himself about the misplay. Yeah. <laughs> um, is that. That must be. That, I swear that's. Not, maybe Mark did this because he knows that Todd can't KO him because. Like, he knows that Tor doesn't play Kakuri or anything like that, so even if he attaches a DCE, he's only doing 60, and maybe that's why Mark just decided to just hold on. And actually, this is quite clever by Mark, because this gives Tor the impression that Mark actually has a worse yeah. hand than he does. This kind of can force Tor to play a little bit more aggressive or risky in order to get, like, maybe only the DCE, not putting that much effort into a good setup, rather taking a lot of effort into a quick start. So, uh, yeah. That's actually really, really clever for Mark. I didn't even think of that until just realizing it just then. But uh, yeah, so da, the Bridget comes out, out for Tor, doing the same as last time, going for a Trubbish and Eevee and a Dramper. Um, and going for yeah, the Floatstone. He is debating where the energy is going to go. It's going to go on that Dramper. You put in a lot of work with it in, in the last game, so he's going to go for that again. And it looks like he's probably going to go for the big wheel here. Yeah. Of course, no point doing Righteous Edge. There's only... Uh, one rainbow on the um there's the Bridget. Uh, oh, it looks like he had the Bridget after the second one. Oh, okay. That's really cool. Right, so now we're gonna see a proper game. Uh Mark surviving the turn and sorry, what I meant to say he only has a rainbow, I mean there's an, he doesn't have a rainbow on the wind pod, so there's no point in doing righteous edge, so uh, only no need you just yeah. need a big wheel and especially now that Mark has played the Bridget he's now committed to letting Todd have this 10 card hand which I'm sure Todd will be very happy about and Mark actually yeah, has the potential to even go for the Glissapod here yeah there's, there's the Ultra Ball I knew I saw it he's gonna he can discard a couple of things do a big amount of damage actually if Mark has a double colorless he has the KO on this Tramper oh that's true he can do crossing cuts, GX. Does he have a double colorless? Maybe that's what he's doing. He should just sort of hide the strength of his hand. No. no. Okay. Just a rainbow. 
But he can still do a first impression for 60. It's, it's decent. Yeah, it, it, actually, that sets up the two shot perfectly. So that's actually a really good number. Yeah, first impression for 60. And then back to Tord. So Tord is still considering what to play. I mean, he has a 10 card hand. Now 11 cards. Yeah. Probably a lot of different options, a lot of things to, to think about. And yeah. Yeah, he does. So right now, Tord, yeah, just again thinking what, what I want to do. What's the best way to go about this? Uh, ideally, probably going to want to find a DC just to start putting pressure on this Galissapod, force Mark to have the Ace Roller, which, uh, as, we, as we've already discussed, because he is not Mace, he does not have it every single time. Yeah. Yeah, he, he has it a lot of the time, but not four turns in a row. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the Potown going down for Tord as well, as now he. Again, when you have like all these cards in hand, you, know, you have, you know, the big wheel, you can do so much with it. Opting to go for the Guzma, so interesting, I guess he wants to take out these wind pods before they become more threatening by just uh, bringing them out and carrying them post haste. And we do see that Tord does have the double colors in his hand as well. The, with the first damage on the Espeon, you can actually use Berserk for the knockout. Or just do Energy Drive. That actually works too. Yeah, sure. Because of the, because of the 10 on the wind pod with the rainbow. Yeah, that's what Mark kind of mentioned earlier, that it's not the best idea to put a rainbow energy on the rim card. And now exactly this is happening. Uh, probably we might see the NSP drive yeah. soon. Yeah, it, it, it's a problem for two reasons. One, it get, the rainbow can be righteous edged off. Two, it makes it so that one uh, one DC on a Lele is exactly enough to energy yeah. drive and knock out. Um, he's not doing it yet, though. He's going to field blur first, so he's going to discard the choice band off the bench Galissapod. And uh, that means another item in a discard pile means more damage that uh, Tord can do with his uh, trash launches. And now Mark's going to bring up the Tapu Coco promo and uh, take his draw for turn. And again, he there is potential for Mark to get the one shot on this Lele. He would need uh, double colors and choice band again yeah. to do crossing cuts. Um, and he is going for the N. So N gives him. Well, he still has all his six prize cards. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just like a bit clumped together. <laughs> yeah. This gives him six for a card of six hand. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a card of six hand. <laughs> <laughs> a hand of six fresh cards, yeah. uh, which is pretty good. Tord gets end to five cards um, compared to the large hand he had before. It's not that much, but yeah. five cards is still fine. Does, does, does he get end to five cards or five to n cards? <laughs> <laughs> he might also get five to the end cards. <laughs> <laughs> um, in any case, now back to Mark, as uh, he just, yeah, the Wimpod gets KO'd. Obviously, he brought up the Coco promo, yeah, now he's going to retreat. Oh, wait, no, oh, sorry, I completely forgot. It was still Mark's turn. He beat, well, sorry, what I meant to say is he hit everything he needed off the end. He got the double yeah. colors and the choice band, and he got the KO of crossing cuts. Crossing cut GX takes the knockout on the Lele and uh, gives Mark his first two prizes of the game. So now it's going to be back on tour to really figure out what to do next. So he's still got five prizes left to take. There's the really stacked Galissapod on Mark's bench which I'm sure Tord will not be happy about. Maybe the uh, maybe he might go for a Righteous Edge to just knock that double colorless off. Although I guess it's not as much of a threat anymore because now the only thing that Mark can really do with it is armor press. Yeah that's true. Um in fact he's really struggling with what to bring up but no he does decide on yeah. the Dramper in the end. And Tordrick takes his draw for turn. He looks like it's got access to a rescue stretcher. And he's going to play it straight away, going to bring the lady to his hand and use the wonder tag. I imagine he'll be going for a Guzma. Yep. Brings it to the bottom of his deck. Going to make sure that's the best option for him. And yeah, plays it, Maybe whacks it down. Not. Does he think, Do you think he's just looking to bring up the other Wimpod? I think so, because that would... Well, that would bring Mark in a pretty bad position in terms of playing Acerola. Good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, because so there, there goes the Guzma. Oh, he's actually going to bring up the Galissapod. So seeing, seeing as this is the bigger threat, and I think he's not able to kill the Wimpod anyway, he's now yeah going to bring up this Tapu Lele, probably attach a double colorless, and yeah, just energy drive again, forcing Mark to have the Ace Roller. If Mark, if Mark doesn't have the Ace Roller here, then this Galissapod is going to be in a world of trouble because it's taking a hundred nice. damage. Does Mark have the Ace Roller? Hmm. He, I think he, he does not. He does not. I, I thought I saw it. Maybe, maybe again I saw, saw it wrong. I'm trying to read his face, but yeah. uh, that's kind of a no. Possible. He has a Guzma, not an Ace Roller, right? Is that is that is that what he's gonna play? Oh, he has Ultra Ball. 
So he could Ultra Ball for a Lele for the Ace of Roller. It looks yeah. like that's what he's going to do. Assuming he has a Lele left. Uh, I'm sorry, I saw one. Oh, no. Going for the other Ghost Spot instead. Maybe. He, he is maybe a. Well, you know, if he has no Acerola, yeah, there the, the Glissapod and the active position is basically KO. So. That's pretty bad. <sighs> He's really agonizing over this, isn't he? Oh, wait, no, he, he, I think he has a lady in his hand already. I saw. I think I saw a flash of rainbow. Again, it could have been just Glissapod. It's so hard to yeah, tell sometimes. It's hard to tell. Yeah. I, I think Mark is holding. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. So now we can use the Wonder Tag. Um, I imagine, again, he will be going for the Ace Roller here. He's got to be careful that he doesn't want to make misplay again. He needs to evolve the Galissapod first before he plays it, because otherwise, the, yeah. again, the first impression will not do enough damage. Well, it, well, it will do some damage, but it will yeah, only do 30, which is really not ideal. So Ace Roller to hand. Whoa. Oh, whoa. oh, wait, no, he, he can oh, still... he can go into the Tapu Koko. Yeah, okay, so this is uh, still fine. Um, yeah, so the other one goes down. Uh, then he attaches the grass to the one that's yet to evolve uh, and is, has been out for a turn. Field Blower on the Potown as well. That's really good, actually. That means that the Glissapod will be out of range of a Drampa Berserk. So yeah. that's actually a pretty, really strong turn from Mark. And... It's nice to see all these comebacks all the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um... Also, Mark realizing that he wants to really like finish his hand out of stuff that is kind of useless. And yeah, first impression for 120. Also, note he put the choice band onto the Tapu Lele, not the Galissapod, because he realizes that he gains no benefit from putting choice bands on Galissapods anymore because crossing cut is no longer an option. You can't take a big one shot on a Lele, for example, with it. So instead, he realizes that it's more value to put it on a Lele to maybe do yeah. a big energy drive later. Exactly. Now. So, now is. Trollot's time to to answer to this. He's playing um, Po Town. Indeed, he is. Um, now it's interesting that he's done this now. It's um because he doesn't need any extra damage to trigger Berserk. There's already enough damage stuff to make that happen. But but this means that now if he evolves stuff. Oh, I think he's just playing it because he's going to sick more anyway, and he'd oh, rather yeah. even because the worry is that uh, maybe the um, Garbodors will take a bit of damage when they evolve, but they all get knocked out by first impression anyway, so it actually doesn't make too much of a difference. Yeah, and Mark gets a bit of a damage, especially well, Mark's playing a lot of Acerolas. That means every time he needs to evolve again into his um, Galissapods. Yeah, it, it becomes a problem for him. Um, speaking of problems for him, uh, this this might be a problem for him as yeah. well. Espeon's pretty big. It's only had, it only has 30 damage on it. So even with a choice band, which you can't attach anyway because the glitter spot's already float stoned, um, first impression can't actually take a KO. So it's weird. It's only 30 damage that the it's doing on that the Espeon is doing. Yeah. But this is actually perfect because this puts the glitter spot in the perfect range. That also uh, explains why Tord was going for the EV so early. Yeah. Oh, having said that, now Tord is, uh, sorry, Mark has taken that threat away. He's been able to play the Guzma, so oh. bringing up that Dramba from the bench, and now he can retreat back into the Glissapod, use first impression for the no the perfect uh, two hit knockout, and now things are really look good for Mark, actually. Definitely. Mark was able to turn this uh, game into his favor, and um, yeah, Tord is again in the position where he kind of needs to react to it. He wasn't really able to put a lot of pressure on Mark. Um, even if Mark hasn't the, the best setup, it's still pretty decent. He he is a good player, so he can work with his resources, he can work with the cards he got, and that's what he's now showing us. Yeah. I feel like that Guzma, that Guzma on the Drampa might especially been game-winning because that's really what was threatening Mark. It's what made the Poe Town so scary because, yeah, like you said, with the Ace of Roland, is a re-evolve constantly. That's, that 30 damage is the difference between a choice band, Berserk, one-hit knockout, and not that. So now that the Drampa is taken away, sure, he can get he can get another Drampa out, put one energy on it, but that's still going to be a while before it builds up to be the same threat that, that one he just knocked out was. Yeah, I agree. So, Ultra Ball again. Probably going to try and find a Drampa here because, like I said, he needs to, although it's not ideal, he needs to get, uh, get the threat there at least. It's really... It's going to be hard for Tord to threaten Mark with anything else because once again Mark has not played a huge amount of items and so the Trash Lanch Garbodor will not be doing the huge amount of damage it probably usually does against a lot of matchups. 
and yeah, that's all I did with this auction ball now. I look at Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's again, it's the return of the questioning all my life decisions face. You know? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, Mark, can't be too sad. Even if, even if you lose, you know, it's, it's still second place at one of the biggest regionals we've had in Europe. It's, yeah, it's a great achievement. Yeah. I, mean, he, I think I was talking to him earlier and he said this is like the first time he's made cuts at a reg- or made the finals of a regionals this big with this like much on the line, you know. Yeah. So he's very happy no matter what. But I think Marcus, well, he was a big name in Germany and in Europe before. And last season, he couldn't quite get the the achievements he, he was used to get and the placements he was used to to have. And it's it's nice to see him making such a good comeback. Yeah. He's now putting a lot more effort into the game than he was last season. Uh, he's also streaming a lot on Twitch. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I might have to correct myself on something on on something, Lydia. So I was saying before, oh, the trash launch isn't too much of a threat, but Tor had a choice ban and put it on the Espion instead of the trash launch Garbodor. That tells me there actually might already be enough items in Mark's discard pile for Tor to take a knockout on this Galissapod. That could be. This time, Mark is not placing the items uh, in a separate pile. We cannot count them, unfortunately. Um, oh, well, hold on. There's, I, I think I see seven down there. I think I see a six and a one. Oh, is this our marker? Yeah. Yeah. Seven. Okay, so maybe then what Todd is thinking is I'm going to be ten short no matter what, and I, I don't fancy my chances of drawing the field blower, so there's no point in attaching the choice band to the active and going for the KO. I might as well play it safe and attach it to the Espion the GX. Either that or maybe the counter's wrong where we're not misreading it. Either way, we're, we're going to find out in a bit when when uh, <laughs> this circle of support takes the damage. Well, as soon as Todd is attacking, we will find out. Yeah. And, uh, ooh, really big find from Tord as well. He does see the Ultra Ball gonna be able to... For, he does see the Ultra Ball discarding a couple of things and he's able to get the Garbatoxin and Garbador out. So, again, Mark will not have access to Lele against the Kyo Keep chaining his Acer Rollers, for example, which is something they did to great effect in the last game before yeah. losing because of the misplay. But, you know, we, we, we'll ignore that because <laughs> it was a really good play at the time. Um, and now... Yeah, no, yeah, I think that's... I think it's like, it's like I said, it's... Um, Oh, that's the Ace Roller anyway. Oh. Yeah, I think Tor just realized that he wouldn't, wasn't able to get the KO without hitting the Field Blower, and he didn't think he'd be able to hit the Field Blower, so he, there, was no, there was no point putting the Glitzpot to 200 damage, essentially, because then at that point, it's like a really big waste of the, of the Choice Band. Yeah. And now with the Ace Roller, Mark probably just takes command of this game, and I would not be surprised if we see uh, uh, move on to Game 3 rather quickly. Oh look, he's attaching a Glowstone <laughs> to Tapu Koko, even so Tapu Koko has no retreat costs. He may be preventing himself from having some dead cards in his deck when towards playing late game ends. Yeah, I think that's exactly why he's done that. Um, now, I really don't see a way for, Tord, for back for Tord now. I mean, the Garbatoxin is nice, but it's not a trash launch. And no. there's actually just no real attacking threat right now. He could put a rainbow on the Tapu Lele, but you can't even use Tapu Cure because this GX attack for the game has already been used. Yeah, he's just going to send the Espeon up, Psybeam, and uh, kind of hope for the best here. <laughs> hope that Mark doesn't have another Acerola. But if he has one, so, then it could be bad news. Another good support? Another good support, another rainbow oh. energy. Does it. Oh, that means he, he's got the attack yeah. because, of course, the, that Glissopod was floatstone earlier, so... Uh, he can just retreat and attack. First impression, 120. Does Tord have an answer to this, or are we going to game three? Tord's body language hmm. sort of Tord tells me... Tord is still me, thinking. He is still thinking, but I don't know. The way his body language is kind of tells me a little bit more it might be likely we're going to game three. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, it's not a shame, Tord. They have over half an hour to go that yeah. should be enough to finish a full game three it should what, what's the play toward shaking your head <laughs> 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 oh he's he got was a, like wait a moment he's got double colorless it's not enough for the knockout though not really he buys himself another turn because uh, the Lele only has uh, 10 damage on it. Oh, yeah. So there's um, yeah, no threat of a knockout at least. So he's retreating. Retreating, going to bring up the Lele. 
energy drive that does 80 damage. It's something. It is, but I don't think it's going to be enough, Lydia. It's, especially that there's a sycamore. <laughs> it's, uh, does he have the win? He looked excited. <laughs> I was like, for wait once. for it, wait for it. Yeah. Oh, he's smiling. Oh, oh my. He seems so happy playing this game. <laughs> well, it's because he won this one, whereas the last one he sort of uh, punted a little bit. Uh, oh, he's retreating. Energy drive. He's gonna do 130. It's again, it, it, he's just trying to flood marks the uh, Tord's field with damage so that there's no options for him. Like, you know, Tord can't retreat into anything now. Everything on his field is damaged. There yeah. it is. Mark takes game two, and we are going to a game three in this final, ladies and gentlemen. So maybe tell us in the chat who do you think will take the last game? Yeah, let's get some hashtags in. We can have a hashtag Tord win or a hashtag Mark win, or if you prefer to support teams. Hashtag 8-bit win, uh, hashtag uh, CC, uh, yeah, CCG win. And if you don't care, just hashtag limitless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Team Mark. Team T Mark, so the one way for Mark looks already. Yeah, hashtag oh. Team Mark. <laughs> Tord, ooh. ooh, it's pretty even actually. Team Mark for life. Yep, 8-bit win, Mark win. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, no. whoa, whoa, dude, not cool, not cool. Hashtag Pokemon Metro. <laughs> Shout out to Pokemon Metro Enter. here. Uh, uh, actually, Benjamin Barons wasn't here this weekend, was he? I didn't no, see him. No, that's because he's in America now. Oh, right, yeah. okay. Hashtag Todd, hashtag Easy Team Mark. Team Jesper. That's basically Team Limitless. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, um, have you guys had any questions? Does Todd have SP on EX? Yes. yes he does. He's used it to great effect already yeah. on stream before. Uh, I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, yeah, there are a lot of questions in uh, non-English language, yeah. so... Yeah, so, uh, so Pandage, float on Coco, opponent pays for a treat. If only it worked that way. Yeah. <laughs> um. yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why am I wasting my time playing this children's card game, Mark Scott's card? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and one damn team... team. Oh, someone's already, already saying team Mark before. So, Marky yeah. Mark, Mark OP, Matle, <laughs> Team Tor, Team Norway. Well, it looks like it's pretty even, maybe slightly in the favor of Mark. Yes, uh, but either way, both, both players clearly very well loved. Well, both players lost. Where's my boy Philip Schultz? Uh, Philip Schultz lost to Mark in top four. Sorry, Tim. Yeah, that was, that was very sad. It was a good game, though. It, it, Nick is our real hero. <laughs> well, that's very flattering. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's give a big shout out to Lydia as well. It's literally been her first time commentating this weekend. I think she's done a really great job. I think you guys should all give a really, really big um, thank you and warm welcome to Lydia for her first time commentating. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nick. That's no problem. So let's get back into a game. Um, both players already did their setup. Seems like they both have a Tapu Lele start, which isn't really what you want to see, but it's okay. Is, oh, that... is this Tapu Fini? No, it is Lele. Okay. I can, you can tell by the silhouette just yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Tord is obviously starting this game. Well, there's no point in not wanting to go first. He's <laughs> yeah, playing definitely. an Ultra Ball, probably going for the standard Tapu Lele, Bridget, and then, um, well, whatever you your deck you play different basic pokemons you want to set up yeah definitely so with that uh Tord, um is gonna just you know do a usual thing just uh try and make sure that he doesn't uh but rather make sure that he has access to uh, again one last time for the last time this regional just have access to everything he needs one last look what are my last six prized cards oh, going to be it looks like his bridget is prized this is a drampa on his bench oh Again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, Tord did win the game where he, his Bridget was prized, so, you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> there, there was game one, right, where his Bridget was prized? Wasn't it in uh, top eight? I, can't, I actually can't remember that now. That was in top eight. Okay. Well, either way, yeah. In um, top eight, his Bridget was prized, but, well, Tord still had a quite good starting hand. He had two Ultra Balls on his hand and a Sycamore, so he was able to find himself two basic Pokemon mm. and uh, then uh, Sycamore... <laughs> with uh, then, well, zero cards left into his hand as he used to Ultra Ball and the other four cards um, 
yeah, he needed to to uh, discard. That was it. But um, yeah, then so it looks like uh, Tor playing an N after you know finding that Dramper attaching a double colorless to it. Uh, he has got a Trubbish off the end at least, so that that's good for him. And then then he just passes the turn. So Mark takes his draw, and what does he see? Uh, oh, oh, that's probably not good. Choice band on the Lele, Aww. Venture Trubbish. Choice band on the Trubbish. Double colorless. Yeah. Oh, he's got Sycamore. Oh, Sycamore. Oh, what are you shaking your head for? It's not that bad. <laughs> it really isn't. I mean, he he has a Trubbish now. That's pretty important. Yeah. And it looks like he even has an Ultra Ball for the Wind board. Yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> not ideal, yeah. but it's fine. It's... Decent. <laughs> yeah, maybe Mark was just expecting to sycamore and hit nothing, because, because, <laughs> like, like, like you said before, he he expects to get unlucky. So yeah, here comes an ultra board, scaling a a, a Travis and a Garbodor. Yeah, hundred percent going to find himself a win pod here. He wants to be able to start doing these uh, chains of first impressions. It's the whole reason why the deck works well. And um, with that, there, there it is, the win pod. Well, yeah. he now has all his uh, well basic Pokemon into into uh, play. All the the Trubbish and the Wimpod. That's all he wants to evolve. He can uh, start setting up next round with the evolutions. Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, again, potential danger zone here for Mark. If he doesn't have another Ultra Ball or he isn't able to play another Ultra Ball, there's only one Wimpod out. This does leave the door open for potentially to Tor to attach a second energy Guzma. Mm -hmm. And actually knock out the win pod yeah. that he has, which is which definitely would be bad news for Mark. But we'll see if Todd has it or not. Mm. I had a feeling he probably would have done it by now if he had access to it. He does mention Eevee. Attaches the psychic to the Dramper. Good does he have the Guzma? What is this what is this card? Is this, it is the Guzma, he has it! Wow! The Wimpod goes active, um, the Guzma switches into the Dramper, and even though, well, actually there's damage on the bench anyway, but even, even if there wasn't, Berserk for 80 base damage is enough to KO this Wimpod, so yeah, wow. down it goes, and Tord takes away one of Mark's biggest threats straight away. And again, same story as last, uh, last time, Tord had no uh, Bridget, but Mark hadn't had a Bridget either, so he wasn't able to find himself enough basic Pokemon, and yeah, um, well, it's sad because Mark didn't really have the opportunity to play Bridget, but uh, that's where you also see the strength of the card. Yeah, and now Mark is probably just going to grab himself uh, Tapu Lele and Bridget now, just yeah. uh, a little bit a little bit later, but at least now, this way, yeah, there you go, Tapu Lele, won the tag for the... Oh, oh Sycamore! Oh, maybe his Bridget is prized? Or maybe he feels like he doesn't have the tempo to... You, you know, you feel that you need to just like go way too fast in order to make use of it. Yeah, he's just gonna go for the Sycamore instead. His hand wasn't too bad. He had an end, so even if he played the Bridget this turn, he would have had a, or even if he uh, searched for a Bridget this turn, he would have had a draw supporter in hand, so um, it wouldn't have been too bad. I'm not so sure what I would have done in this uh, mm. situation. Um, Mark missed the Wimpod or the Heavy Ball off of that Ooh. Sycamore. Ooh. He can still energy drive. It's not, again, not terrible, but missing the Wimpod, that is extremely terrible. That is the yes, last thing you is. want to do, especially when you know, you know, the only one was knocked out last turn. It means that, again, Mark is going to miss out on the, the crossing cuts, the first impressions, the, well, mainly the first impressions, but the chance of crossing cut and the, just the chance to really do what his deck is built to do. He's just not, he's not been able to set up his main attacker. It's as simple as that. That's simply not good. No. <laughs> um, the choice man goes on to the Dramper as well, and that means that he has the knockout on the Lele. There goes the Wonder Tag. Um, gonna be for yeah, gonna be for Sycamore. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. For Sycamore, Mark is already. <laughs> yeah. More than. I think mentally he kind of has given up on this final. Yeah, it would be different if he managed to get at least one Wimpod out, but two turns in a row, well, yeah, getting one pit, one Wimpod out, getting Gusbird decayed, and then Sycamore not hitting a replacement for it. Yeah, that's hard. <sighs> Uh, more, 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 sa more sad than a Q-bone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag too soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, in any case, oh, Tordo also has another energy to attach, so that's really good, because um, this uh, Dramper will probably go down to an energy drive next turn from Mark's bench Tapu Lele, so at least now with this uh, Psychic Attachment, he'll be able to get the Espeon Jex from his deck 
Or maybe not if it's prized. Oh, is it prized? Oh, no, he's already put it out. Never mind. Okay. I didn't even see him put it put it out there. But so, yeah, no. So now Todd will have something to follow up with once this drama inevitably goes down. So that's good for him. Definitely. So Todd's still shuffling his hand. Um, probably going for the second one next. Probably indeed. There's the cut. Uh, yeah, after yeah. that, there's the sycamore. <laughs> and Marcus actually throwing <laughs> his cards for it. like, here you go, you know, since, since you know, you're, you're kind of just wrecking me anyway. I'm just going to you know, draw your deck for you. There you go, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not, that's not, you know, that's, that's Mark Lutz. I'm just, I'm just a nice guy. My, my name is Mark Lutz. <laughs> like, I'm helping you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now Todd will be able to, yeah. With the again the damage on the bench already, we'll be able to do berserk for 180 for knockouts, and it's really unmarked to find something to respond with. But normally he'd respond with a Galista bot and he'd be fine, but he has no wind pot out. He has no wind pot out, and Garbador is not going to do well. We don't really know for sure, but it, I think well, I see a six. six. But still, well, I mean, it would be enough to KO the Drumper, of course, but um. Yeah, the thing still is, still not a lot of pressure he can put on Tord, no. and well, Tord is completely crushing. Mark. <laughs> yeah, and we see that another rainbow energy from Mark onto the Lele. There's the end. And yeah, the other thing is, um, Mark really wants to save the Trubbish to take a big knockout on a on a GX. Like there's or EX. There's no point really uh, for Mark to attack the, for the KO with yeah. this. Um, with the Trubbish now, especially because he, well, he needs to see the Garbodor first of all to even do anything with it, but if he has the energy in hand, yeah, he's just going to attach it to the Lele, just guarantee the knockout with the energy drive on this Tramper, because otherwise the Tramper is going to do even more damage than it's already done, and it's already put in a hell of a lot of work. Yeah, for sure. There's the cut. Todd will still get three cards. It's not great, but it's not the end of the world. Sorry, it's not, yeah, not great, but not the end of the world. Uh, did, you, did you draw a Sycamore off that? I feel, I feel like you might have drawn a Sycamore off that. I actually can't see it though. I can't see it. Mark's not very cooperative. <laughs> yeah, well, no, Tord isn't cooperative. Oh, I, I, get, yeah. I guess I can't really oh, see. Oh. Yeah, both of them. Um, so, energy drive. Dramper goes down. Mark takes two prizes. Tord's going to have a look to see how many items have actually been played. Make sure that the count's uh, updated and that he's aware of what's, uh, what what damage that Tord could potentially do with a Trash Lunch Garbador, which he could potentially have access to. He does have the Trubbish there ready to go on the bench. Yeah. But I think it's more likely he'll probably just bring up the... Oh, maybe I was going to say the Espeon, but instead opting to bring up the Lele. And... Yeah, Mark only uh, oh, still has four prize cards left. Or is it... Yeah, no. Two. It looks like two, but... Uh, I think it might actually be three. Three. Mark has three prize cards left. So even if he somehow managed to KO this Tapu Lele, which is very well quite impossible with mark's board position oh there's a float stone so yeah that, that this makes sense now but Todd doesn't have a dce he only has a rainbow energy so you can oh, oh. there's the hala but only he's only control four cards after that though <laughs> 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 Mark is that's the, I think that's the most excited I've seen Mark in my life at, in a real life tournament. <laughs> 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 oh, he What's going on? Well, Mark did definitely not expect to see a Harald here, <laughs> but he al already told me that his opponent uh, in some previous Swiss rounds was playing Harald, and he was like, "What the hell? Who was <laughs> playing Harald?" But um. Well, and apparently the answer is the guy who's playing against you in the finals of the Bremen Regional Championship. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no other than Tord Ratlev. <laughs> and he's in. It looks. He looks like he's in a decent position to win potentially. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is this has been such a fun final, guys. I don't know about you. I don't know about all who watch at home, but I'm loving every second of this. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Oh, Mark! Finally evolving his Galissapod and his Garbodor, um, attaching an energy to the Galissapod. So we might see him uh, retreat the Tapu Lele. Now it has a floatstone attached to it, so Mark does not need to pay any retreat costs. And then um, 
attack. Yeah, really good turn for Mark, actually. Tor did not see anything of the Howler. He ended up just leaving the Lele with the float zone active. So very telling to me that he yeah. basically means that, look, I just got nothing. Oh, there's the Guzma. Oh. And he, he's, what, he's making Tord read it? What's, wait. Oh, he, okay, Tord had the discard pile, so oh, he was okay. giving it to... Uh, told to put at the top of the disco pile. I was like, oh, what do you mean? I was like, what are you doing, Mark? Read my Guzma. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, since that lady already had 70 damage on it, first impression will be enough for the knockout. Mark might actually win this, you know. Well, crazy. Considering the starts and everything, that one, I mean, it was the end and then towards Hala, it just ended up sticking really well. And um, now... Wait, are those two price? Actually, I think there might be two price cards left to mark. I think they're, they're like yeah, really I, I squished they're, together. Yeah. So actually, yeah, sorry, there are four price cards left before. Now there's two price cards left. Um, can Tord pull off? Uh, w rather, what can Tord pull off to maybe make a comeback here? He's decided to mention Espion. He's just playing it in. Yeah. It's going to leave both players in the dumps. Really, um, going to leave Tord with three cards and Mark with only two. Well, possibly one. Actually, I guess we'll find out now how many it really is. We think oh, yeah, it's two. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. But, uh, Actually, good thing that they play on right now. Yeah. Both players don't have uh, any any cards like Oranguru or Octillery that kind of, well, prevent you from being completely lost uh, into a late game. And, yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it makes sense as both of these players are playing Garbodor. Yeah, and it looks like, yeah, we were right. So Mark has two prize cards left because he yeah, did draw two yeah. off the end there. Um, with yeah, Tor drawing three, but seemingly not finding anything very useful. Like it seems another Guzma. Don't think I saw any energy either. Really, just it's, be. It's still as Mark's turn, right? No. No, no. Uh, Tor oh. played the end. Okay, sorry. Yeah. It's been a long day. <laughs> um, now it's Mark's turn. Yeah, Tor just yeah. passes. Wow. It's pretty bad. Heavy ball. That's now the sick item in Mark's discard pile. I imagine it'll probably be heavy balling for yeah another wind pod. Yep, checking his stack, having a quick look at the resources he's still got. Marks again. I, I've repeated this so many times that he is in a position where um, if he gets a crossing cut GX with a choice band and a DCE, he wins the game because he can just KO this Lele for his last two prizes. With his hand size though, I highly doubt it's going to happen. And in fact, it looks like both players. Oh not drawing amazingly off of this end and yeah mark after playing the heavy ball retreats to the cocoa and passes so it seems like his hand is not too good but he does not seem too upset and well mark kind of lost his poker face so i think we can tell that he sh he has some kind of plan yeah and interestingly enough actually this is the first time i think i've seen to attach a double colors to an espion uh, yeah could he be going for a divide I think so. I see a Guzma. Yeah, I think what he's probably going to do here is Guzma, yeah, switch it to the Espion, and then maybe divide GX and knock out the Wimpod on the bench. It's a well, play. Well, we'll see. It's either that or Psychic. Well, actually, no, uh, Psychic would be cool as well because it actually takes the knockout on the, on the uh, Garbodor, and yeah, yeah. So, so he does that. And uh, now Crossing Cut GX is no longer an option for the win because, of course, the Espion is 200 HP. It's too much for uh, Crossing Cut World of Choice Band only does 180. This so. is back and forth constantly. Now all of a sudden, Tord actually might be in a position to win the game. Again, such a close game. This is Razor's Edge Pokemon trading card game action right here for you. Definitely. I hope you guys are having a good time. At yeah, home. <laughs> yeah. Like 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 we both said before, we're we're both enjoying every second of this so much. This this is. Uh, the razor's edge either one of these players if they just see something to work with yeah. they could uh, be, be the winners of this match right now it looks like Tord might be just be able to edge it but we know the way this deck works we know that Galissapod has inherently a lot of power and it looks like Mark is actually just going to retreat in first impression 120 back to Tord if Tord is not able to to well retreat well Tord needs to retreat this Espeon otherwise that's game. Yeah. But what is he going to do? He's thinking, checking his discard pile. That's that's all stuff you you do. You can almost hear a pin drop in here. The yeah. you, you, you can cut the tension with a knife. Even outside in the hall. Or maybe, or maybe cut the tension with a car <laughs> <laughs> Um
That's a sycamore. But sycamore means that he doesn't win this turn because there's no way he can do enough damage to enough things to get take his last two prizes. But Mark was still like, come on, sycamore, <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> the many, many reactions of Mark Lutz. <laughs> oh, oh god, there's someone dragging a trolley over. Please, please don't break our stream cable now. I, I don't swear. Think we'll go over the stream cable. I, I closed the door. That is um, risky. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Focus on the game again. Yes. So, there's the Garbodor. Potan means it will take 30 damage. Again, Tor checking his discard pile. He, he might be... Well, maybe he's just... Trying to, to get a big o quick overview over the game state. Being very sure what has been played already. Another trubbish hits the bench. Yeah, he's actually going for the retreat, so yeah, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah. He knows he can't send leave the session on GX active. He knows that he'll lose the game if he does that, so he retreats into the trash lunch Garbador. Mark's already got the counters ready. So towards making sure there's nothing else he can do. He actually puts a choice band onto the SBR. Lele and Mark has the Lele for the Whoa. Guzma. Well, he's going to check the deck first. Is there a Guzma left in the deck? There is. Wow. And Mark Lutz is your Bremen Regional Championships. And look, you can see the jubilation on his face. He, he probably thought he punted that Regionals after the first game misplay. But Mark wins game three, wins the match, and he is your Bremen Regional Champion. Congratulations to Mark Lutz. <laughs> so we'll we'll get Mark for a short interview. We'll be back very soon. Don't go anywhere. I know you enjoyed the last interview we had with Mark, so uh, <laughs> we'll we'll be happy to see him again. Definitely.
Easy. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am here with Bremen regional champion Mark Lutz. <laughs> uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Seriously, very well deserved. A really incredible finals match. Yes. But now, before we get to anything else, I'm sure you know what I'm going to ask you about. That moment with the uh, with the first impression. What was going through your mind when that happened? Well, I w at first I was like, well, this is not going to matter because I have a roller in hand. So I was like, okay, sure. But I was like, uh, people would be just like, oh yeah, the lucky idiot won. No, they're <laughs> like, oh yeah, he can misplay and still win. <laughs> Great. So yeah. yeah. Um, uh, actually, what's, um, what happened was uh, a lot of people were saying that they, they thought it was really unfair. A lot of people were saying that, you know, oh, uh, it's actually, you know, they should let, just let you do it, believe it or not. But uh, I don't know, because it seemed like you're more angry with yourself that you did it at the time. I don't know if that's correct to read or not, but... Uh, like, um, I, this, I, I think the ruling was definitely correct because, like, I wanted to almost take my prize. And I think this is part of, like, the announcing attack. It, yeah, the intention so, and all that. <laughs> yeah, so I think, like, I can't really complain about that. Yeah. We actually have here, by the way, uh, our wondrous man David does have the trophy here, so I'm now going to give this to you. Oh, no, you can hold it. I mean, you're the champion, right? <laughs> I'm, not a cha I'm not a champion. I can't even win worlds, apparently. <laughs> always ninth. Yeah, always ninth. All 15th, top 16. But uh, no, you, today you are the champion, Mark, and yeah. again, very well deserved. It was an incredible finals. Like, we loved watching every yes. second of that. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, we did have a lot of fun as well. <laughs> Your reaction to the Hala as well, like, what, what was that? You, like, you went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were, like, joking because Hala is, like, a meme card, you know? It, it, it is a meme then, card, yeah. And then, like, he couldn't use his JX attack and he had to Hala, and I was like, oh, wait, there's a new card. What does it do? <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah. So. Uh, fantastic. So... So now that you've won, this is your first, you said, really big regionals win when, before, after the change, you know. Yes, of so, course. Um, so what do you do now? Go home. Go home. <laughs> fair enough. Probably, probably sleep, I imagine, as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, fair enough. Well, again, once more, congratulations. An extremely well-deserved win. Guys, we hope you really enjoyed the stream this weekend. Don't forget to check out the Limitless CCG Twitter and Facebook page. We'll be, I'm sure there'll be some sort of coverage from the event afterwards. Lydia isn't here right now, so I don't know exactly what will be going on. But, you know, all the action is uh, updated from there. So make sure to follow along both of those. But from all of us here in Bremen, goodbye and good night. Bye. <laughs>